but I won't be too long. I'm really glad to be here today. Uh, we've been doing this for a number of years, and uh, you know the, the groups are very enthusiastic. Uh, I encourage you to use the cards on the tables, write down some questions. We have two Q&A uh, sessions, but we try to get the, uh, get the patient questions on paper so the doctors can kind of triage and put them all together so that uh, like questions are together and answer as many as we can. All right, but uh, with that, I just want to let you know I'm very happy to be here, especially the plane ride was great until like 10 seconds before we were going to land when they went <laughs> and said, oh, uh, there was a plane that didn't move, uh, so we'll try again. So I, w I was kind of like, uh, why don't we just fly home? But, uh, but it worked out okay. Anyway, uh, without further ado, I want to welcome Cindy Lovelace up, and she's going to say a few words. So. Good morning. So I have new zebra heels on. It took a little while to kind of navigate and get used to them <laughs> walking up here. Um, I, I'm really glad to see so many of you here. This is a, a great opportunity to, um, to educate you and to give you an opportunity to also meet each other and share your stories. And I think that's a really important part of um, getting well is being able to share stories and learn from other people's experiences. And um, so I am the executive director of the Healing Net Foundation, but I didn't get there until I had a story. And so I want to share a little bit of that story with you uh, to tell you kind of why I'm standing up here and why Bob just introduced me. But um, I'm actually a peanut. I was diagnosed in uh, 2011. And um, it was an interesting uh, story because uh, I was previously a breast cancer survivor. And so I kind of thought I had checked the cancer box, right? And uh, was not expecting to get another diagnosis of cancer, and especially one that they didn't have a whole lot of information on. So when I had breast cancer, I was used to a protocol. Here's what you do. Um, here's your odds. Here's the, you know, the medications you can take to, you know, uh, make sure that it doesn't come back. All those good things, the things that you want to hear. And then when I'm diagnosed with neuroendocrine, um, the story was, oh, we really don't know a whole lot about this. We're not really sure exactly what to tell you, et cetera, et cetera. And so I had the right thing. I had surgery done, but I still was not being seen by a neuroendocrine specialist. And uh, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, a place that is uh, well known for great medical care. And I had really good doctors. My oncologist uh, was, is fabulous. Uh, I still see her, love her to death. But she just wasn't aware of, um, of neuroendocrine cancer. And so um, uh, the funny twist in my story, uh, or the odd twist, is that um, I was diagnosed early 2011. So in October 2011 is when Steve Jobs passed away. And it was literally on that day that I learned he had neuroendocrine cancer, and I learned it from CNN News. I had no idea. And so as I'm watching that, I'm a little bit devastated at <laughs> the fact that, oh, you know, this he has the type of cancer that I have, and guess what? It started in his pancreas and went to his liver. And um, so I literally turned and Googled neuroendocrine like I hadn't done that before, and who should pop up in the top of the Google search but this face, Dr. Eric Liu. And Dr. Liu was at Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt was literally across the street from where I was having treatment. Who knew? Apparently none of the physicians knew what Dr. Liu was doing over at Vanderbilt. And so uh, I was able to get in to see Dr. Liu fairly quickly, and, um, and it just, I can't describe to you the feeling that that uh, came over me of feeling like I was talking to someone who understood, who knew what I was talking about, and who could give me at least some answers. And so um, Dr. Liu has been, you know, pretty much managing my care, even from Denver, uh, back to Nashville, Tennessee. But the most important thing I think that came out of that, other than, you know, me feeling well, was the fact that we started talking about how this could be different. 
and how patients should not have to search for a long time or feel like that they have more information than their doctor has or they're trying to educate their doctor. And so what could we do about this? And so that is where the concept of the Healing Net Foundation was formed. And so what we're trying to do, and we've been uh, working on this for about three years, and, and we've actually been pretty successful. A lot of things have fallen in place for us, and we've been very blessed by people who have supported us. And so we've been able to put together uh, brochures, educational brochures, that are written by physicians to physicians. And so some of you probably picked up at the table today the Net Primer for Healthcare Professionals. It's a really good resource. Um, we've printed about 3,000 of those. We've sent them out to uh, patient support groups. If you're in a patient support group and we have not sent you brochures, let me know. <laughs> uh, the email is on the, the brochure and I will send you more. So a lot of patients are found, finding it successful in taking these into their physician and their physician learning from that. Obviously, that's just the tip of the iceberg, so we want to be able to get out more of these, uh, particularly to the community physicians, to this, uh, even the specialists, the GI doctors that patients uh, tend to see first, the pulmonary specialists that uh, many of you may have gone to see first who were n was not really aware of, of neuroendocrine tumors. So we want to better educate the uh, general medical community about this so they at least think about the possibility uh, and they also have access to what the latest treatments are. There is a lot that has happened in the last year with neuroendocrine. Uh, exciting things, new drugs, new treatments, a lot of new options that are out there and there's more to come. And so we want to make sure that the medical community is educated and um, we also want to be able to help serve the patients and connect the patients to those physicians. And to that end, we have been very proud to uh, partner with um, NCAN because uh, they have obviously been serving the patient community for many years. They've done a fabulous job of setting up these conferences, um, particularly focus focusing on lung nets. Um, I know a lot of you feel like, hey, hello, we're out here. Um, because a lot of uh, information is put out there about uh, uh, other types of neuroendocrine. But um, you are uh, important, you're very important, you're obviously very important to NCAN. And so we were very proud to be able to co-sponsor this conference. And, um, and, and I just want to say thank you to Marianne and Bob for all that you have done for the NET community. So if you have any questions about Healing Net Foundation, what we do, you can email me, uh, ask Dr. Lou. I'm sure he can, he can give you his side of the story, uh, which uh, is, uh, is, is pretty similar probably. But um, again, thank you for being here. You are here in great hands. Uh, I've already heard some of uh, the uh, discussion between Dr. Oberg and Dr. Ramirez. I mean, they really care. They care about you, and um, they're really good at what they do. So uh, enjoy. And Marianne, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, and thank you again for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Cindy. Um, I don't know if many of you know that Cindy is a peanut, and I'm a mid-gut. So we. I have it in my, I had it in my ileum, so I have no affiliation with the lung community. However, um, back in 2013, Dr. Liu and um, Kim, Kim Possible asked if I would help sponsor a conference for the lung noise community. And so we flew in Dr. Granberg, and um, Dr. Liu said, oh, it'll be a small group of people, Marianne, maybe 50 people. Well, we were very excited when over 130 of you showed up to the meeting. And it was a really great success, and it was a great honor for NCAN to sponsor that first event because we were able to bring Dr. Granberg in, and you were able to have the opportunity to meet with the specialists from around the world and get that one-on-one. -on -one. In 2014, we did the conference in um, Charlotte, and we had about 150 people. And it was also a great opportunity. Unfortunately, you didn't have that time to have the con consults con to consult the doctors. 
Um, so this year we decided to fly in Dr. Granberg, uh, Dr. Oberg, and we are so grateful that Dr. Oberg has spent the week with you guys and able to talk to each of you. And he told me last night that it was really great to meet you all and that he, had, he was able to give you so much information and I hope that you t take that information and that advice and use it. Um, we have to thank Dr. Uh, we have to thank Dr. Lou first for all his love and support. Um, he is a really great guy. He always thinks about you, Lung Noi patients. He makes sure that you get the things that you need. Um, we have to thank Novartis for their continued support because without their support and the support of Net Alliance, this would not happen. Um, I have to thank the Healing Net Foundation. Um, we are so honored to be able to partner with such a great organization. And we also like to thank Ipsen for also their sponsorship. Um, our com we have a commitment to you lung patients, and the commitment is to make sure that at least once every other year that you have a meeting and that we can be able to set up these kind of forums and also these opportunities for you to have a consult with these doctors. Um, we have been um, supporting the community in other ways as well, the Lovable Lung Noi Facebook page. I also need to encourage you all to join the Inspire Lung Neck page. Um, that is also sponsored by the Healing Net Foundation, um, NCAN, and also the Lovable Lung Noids. It's a place where, unlike Facebook, um, a lot of families would not be able to find you. Um, it's a little more private, so please take an opportunity to look into that. Um, I'd also like to remind everybody that we are having the National Conference in New Orleans. Um, there will be a section on lung noids, um, but it also will have every other type of uh, tumors. Um, these events are two and a half day events, and it's a great opportunity to meet and greet everybody. Um, so if you are able to come down to New Orleans, we'd love to have you, it's a great time. Um, I'd also like to remind you that there are cards on the table to ask questions. Okay, and um, please, um, if you have any questions at all, come back into the back room. I'm gonna give you a brief description of what NCAN does and why we do NCAN. Um, I was diagnosed in 2001 after seven years of being misdiagnosed. Um, when I finally got diagnosed at the time, there was only Susan Anderson site and the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation. I got diagnosed at 4 p.m. on a Thursday evening. Unfortunately, the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation did not open until Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. So I felt very alone and went on the line and was told that we, after reading all the information that I'd probably be dead in five years. So I was very, very upset. So in 2002, um, when everything kind of settled down and I took over the New York support group, I made it my mission that no patient should ever have to wait for a response from anybody. And that if you were in desperate need to speak to somebody or needed support, that I would be there to do so. So we're very proud that since 2002, we answer the phone 365 days a week, and you will either get myself, my husband, or my daughter. So when you call, you're not talking to somebody that's reading a script. You're talking to somebody who has dealt with this. My husband is my caregiver. My daughter is also a caregiver and also a carcinoid patient herself. So like I said, when you call us, you're actually speaking to somebody that understands what you're going through. Um, so please remember that um, if you need us, all you have to do is call, email us. We send out information packets to, to the patients for free. This event is being recorded. It's being sponsored by NCAN and the Healing Net Foundation. We will have it up on the website. Unfortunately, there are some slides and some speakers that cannot allow us to share the information. I'm sorry, but in order for them to publish, it cannot be published anywhere else. So that's why it is important to come to these live events because you're getting the first hand and first up to date information that nobody else can have. So without any further ado, um, let me get this conference started and let's call Dr. Eric Liu. And remember, if you have any questions, I'll be in the back of the room. I'm so glad you guys are here. And I'm sure most of you are glad that I have some place to work. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's so great to see you guys here. And, uh, you know, the story is actually a little bit more than what even what Marianne told you. Um, when I was, when I had first come back from, you know, I'm not a professional lung doctor. You guys probably know that. And, you know, I'm more of a professional gut doctor. And, um, 
and uh, when uh, when I came back from 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 uh, Sweden where I had trained, I uh, I got these calls from and emails from patients saying, "Oh, I have lung neuroendocrine." I was like, "Well, you know, I don't really do lung." It was basically like, "Can you come? Can you you know? Can I come? Can I see you?" I was like, "Well, you know, I guess it's okay." And then when I started seeing lung neuroendocrine patients, I think within like two or three months, I must have had the biggest practice in about in the whole world. Uh, well, not the whole world, but the whole country. Because what I quickly discovered was that lung neuroendocrine patients were like the red-headed stepchild, like with nine fingered and eight toes of the neuroendocrine world, right? And the neuroendocrine world is like the red-headed stepchild of the cancer world. And I said, gosh, there's, there is a need here. You know, these, these patients don't uh, have the caregivers. And unfortunately, the, the uh, I mean, the uh, healthcare professionals, they have lots of caregivers. But they didn't have um, really the, the, the formed uh, professional care that they really needed. Uh, there were certainly lots of docs who were interested in intestinal things, or, and a lot who were interested in Christian pancreas. But if you look at the numbers, I don't know if you realize this, but you guys are 25% of all the neuroendocrine patients that we see. At least 25%, if not more, actually. And so, uh, you know, luckily, with the training that I had received in Sweden, I said, well, let's do this. And then uh, when, uh, when uh, Kim O'Connor started to put the, the Facebook page together, we realized what a huge need there was. And then when we put that conference together with, um, with Marianne and Bob, then we really knew. I, actually, I told her I thought 30 people would show up. You know, I thought there would be like one little table here. And we had 135 people. It was actually pretty amazing. So, um, and, and since then, we've really started to recognize it. And I'm particularly gratified because um, in the past couple of years, you know, again, with lung being so kind of ignored, we didn't really have any tools for you. So everything I used was basically, you know, kind of borrowed from our, our other colleagues in the other um, neuroendocrine organ systems. But um, this past year, uh, Novartis finished a, a huge clinical trial dedicated really just to looking at, at kind of lung and GI uh, carcinoid tumors, neuroendocrine tumors. And so it's like the first big trial looking at the efficacy of a medication for you guys, for love. So it's been, a, it's been really exciting, and they just got FDA approval, right? Just like a month ago. So yeah, we're really, really excited about it. Yay! Thanks for doing that. Uh, and I told Shilpa, I met Shilpa, Shilpa is the director of marketing for neuroendocrine at Novartis in Jersey, and I told her, I said, you know, I don't think your drug works for gut. And she's like, oh, she didn't want to hear that. And I said, but it really works for lung. And she, she was happy about that, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on our way. You know, I think you guys are getting, you know, we're, we have, um, you know, our gallium scan was just approved, you know, two weeks ago. Hooray. That was very exciting. You know, hopefully the PRT uh, uh, tool will be uh, approved, you know, within the next year or so. Um, you know, there are new clinical trials looking specifically at lung. People are becoming much more interested. And I think we're starting to pull the pulmonary um, oncologist over to our side. And, and hopefully they're going to begin to appreciate it. But there's a lot of stuff to do, you know. I mean, you guys, look, we're still talking about typical and atypicals and things like that. That's that's like from the, you know, that's like from the 20th century. You know, we don't, that's old stuff. So, you know, hopefully we can start to get people to do more KI-67s and we can start to understand the disease better and we can see it better and so, so you guys can get treated. Because um, the story is, um, and, and I have to, I have to make sure that I highlight how important it was that I received my training from Dr. Oberg. Uh, you know, as you guys know, and a lot of you met him this week, and I'm so delighted that you got to meet him personally, so you can see what an amazing person, you know, why I think so highly of him, and what an amazing man he is. But um, we, he came to Nashville with me a couple of years ago. We did this kind of a thing, and uh, he, he and I saw a 17-year-old, um, 16-year-old lung neuroendocrine patient, and she had a very low KI-67, and she was, she lived in a small town, and she saw the small doctor in Manhattan. And, uh, and I won't name the hospital, but it's on the Upper East Side. And, uh, and they want to give her radiation and chemotherapy, like hard chemotherapy, uh, because her, her KI-67 was 5%, which made it atypical. And I remember when she left, he said, that's almost malpractice. Do you remember that, patient? Oh my gosh, that's almost malpractice. And so since then, we've really been fighting hard because uh, I don't even know how many patients out there are not just receiving care and receiving help but maybe are even being hurt in some cases. And so when we finish this, do me a favor, get out there. I tell people all the time, 
you know, if you're if you're wearing a zebra dress or if you're wearing a zebra bracelet or you're wearing a zebra pin or you know someone or love someone who's a zebra, get out there. You, we're all warriors in this crusade. Okay, you know, we have some, we have we have a a, a a big battle, and a lot of it has to do with uh, education, education, education. And you know, the mission of the Healing Net Foundation is just to bring you guys up to the forefront. You know, I think. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Ellison, what's his first name? The uh, the Oracle guy, Larry. Yeah, Larry Ellison just gave two hundred million dollars to to USC to do these things. You know what we could do with two hundred million dollars? We could throw a great party, first of all, that'd be really nice. and we could do a ton of research dedicated to neuroendocrine. So I think the more we get out there, and the more we find, the more that the people realize that you exist and understand what you are and what you have, um, we can make a huge impact. And and as and as as much as I can, I'll keep you all alive so you can be out there and fight for us because it's a community and uh, all of us have passion, all of us are driven by different things and uh, in this case we're driven by, I'm driven by your health and your well-being and as long as, and, and I tell people all the time, look, I'm very blessed, I have three beautiful children, I have a beautiful wife who, uh, who, who keeps my head very, very small, don't worry. Um, and so I, I don't have anything to want for. So all I can do is give to you. So and the more I can, and I've, I've been very blessed because I was given a gift by Dr. Ober, the training that I received. And since then, uh, I've been given a gift by you guys, by being able to learn from you and, and, and see what it is that your disease really is and not just what the, you know, fake things are in the textbook. Uh, because as some of you know, uh, I may, I don't, I may practice in the box, but I, I practice right at the very, very corner. And you guys are out here, right? And uh, I know for sure there are some of you who have seen many pulmonologists and many doctors who have had no relief over all these years. And then we'll see you two days ago, and all of a sudden you can climb the mountains, right? I, yeah, she'll tell that story. Um, so it's just those kinds of things. So I welcome you. I hope you see that this is really a, a sense of community. Please share your stories with each other. Please, and if you are doing well, do me a favor. If you get on, get on the Facebook pages or the social network and tell people, give them hope, let them know. Because there's a newbie that shows up every, what, once every like 25 minutes, it feels like. And so if we can help those people understand that we can help them, we can help them live good quality of life, good quantity of life, then, um, then we'll have done something great. Okay, so enjoy your day today. We have a whole bunch to learn. We're going to present you all, these inf uh, all this inf in, um, interesting information. And uh, we're going to be around all day, so make sure you grab you know, some of the experts. We have great medical oncologists, great endocrine oncologists, pathologists, surgeons, me. Uh, you're stuck with me. Uh, and uh, nurse practitioner, our superstar nurse practitioner, our superstar nurse, Pam. Da -da -da -da. And Laura. So remember, if you can't get a hold of me, you can always get a hold of Pam, and somehow Pam will always get a hold of me. Yeah. And, uh, but get out there and let people know. I know Denver is not an easy place to get to. Actually, it's easy to fly to, but it's a, it's a long drive. So I think uh, you know, not so many people were able to come to this meeting. But get out there and tell them. And let's do this as much as we can because the more if we start like this now, I promise you we'll have 1,000 people in a few years. So let's keep going. It's up to us. Okay, enjoy your day, everyone.